All right, welcome to our tips number 21. This is an awesome R tip. We're going to cover creating data frames, which is a common question that beginners have. And I'm going to give you four different ways. So this is really awesome tutorial. To get started, though, what you need to do is you need to sign up for the Business Science R tips newsletter if you want to get this every week um, and to also get access to all of the code here from the past uh, 20 or so R tips. So what you need to do, um, you'll get a link. Uh, what you'll do is do a git pull, pull down the latest files and folders, and you'll go into O21 data frames in R. So click on that, and we're gonna be working in this O21 data frames in R.R file. Open that, and that's what this file will be. Okay, so to get started here, we're gonna load in a few libraries. We're gonna be actually working with an Excel file. Um, read and write Excel I'm gonna load and then I'm gonna load the Plotly library um, and the Tidyverse uh, uh, series of packages so that's gonna load in a bunch of libraries the main one that we're gonna be working with here is Tidyverse and primarily the Tibble library from the Tidyverse series of packages so um, first what we're gonna do is cover making a data frame from scratch and this is a really useful tool um, I don't often make data frames from scratch, but uh, when I do, I use the tibble function. And we'll cover why here in a second. So I'm going to use this tibble function. And what this does, if I highlight these and hit control and enter, um, it turns a combination of a value and um, some contents of that value into a data frame. And more specifically, it's called a tibble. So it's 10 by 1 here. You can see that. And that's what this data frame is. So if I say if I store this, this is a data frame and uh, we can see this in our environments. If I go to DF and click on that, I open it up and it looks a lot like an Excel file. In fact, I can filter it if I do filter, um, say, five to ten. Um, it'll give me those rows and, and so on. So it's kind of like in an Excel file. Um, think of a data frame as like a table in that Excel file. Um, it has a class associated with it. So if I do class, you can see it's tibble, df, tibble, and data frame. So it's actually a special type of data frame that inherits these two additional classes. And if I do is data frame, it returns true. And we can see that because it's a data frame. So that's how you would make a data frame from scratch. I use the tibble function. Next, um, what I'll, I want to show you is how I'm normally interacting with data frames. I'm reading them in from some sort of data source. So uh, I covered data importing in my data wrangling weeks two and three sections of the 101-R course. And also we're going to make a plot here, an interactive line plot of a time series. So um, I cover line plots in detail in data visualization week four of the 101 course. So check those out if you really want to go deep into uh, learning R for data wrangling and visualization. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the read XLSX function from read Excel, and I'm going to point it to this file here. It's an Excel file. If I click that Excel file, if I view it, um, it's actually an Excel file, and we'll see what I'm importing here in a second. Okay, so that Excel file looks something like this, where I've got a date column and an interest column. So this, is, this might be a table that you have in your Excel file. And what we're going to do is read that in. So I'm using read Excel. And as soon as I use that read Excel, it reads that data in the date column and the interest from that specific sheet. And I can give it different sheets that I want to read. So sheet one, um, interest rate and table when it's reading that. Um, next, what I can do is I can take that data and I can actually do something with it. A common thing that you'll want to do is visualize. So this is using the GG plot and I'm creating an object called G. Uh, it looks something like this. This is a static plot, and I can make it interactive with this ggplotly function, um, and I can see what the interest rate looks like over time. Cool. All right, uh, so that was the second way. The third way is from other data structures, and this is a common data structure that you'll work with once you get more involved in R is working with lists. So I've created a pretty complex list here. It's got a, a list, it's got user names, it's got email addresses, and then it's even got a, a, a list nested inside of lists. So we've got a list here with li more lists. So it's a pretty complicated structure. Um, and it looks something like this. So if I, if I check out this Moneyball list, um, you can expand it and kind of expand it and expand it and, and so on. Um, so it's very, it's highly nested. 
Well, what we can do is we can actually use the as tibble function to convert that to a data frame. So when I convert it, it, it actually um, works pretty well with lists that are in this nice structure where you can take a, um, each of the different items here uh, and kind of put those into different components. So this is nice when your data is formatted, um, but sometimes you'll run into an issue where this doesn't work. This, you know, maybe something's not formatted correctly. Maybe this um, has, has a C here and uh and you've got your money ball list and then all of a sudden you've got character three or something like that so um what you can also do and this is a secret of the pros is use another function here this function number four which is in frame and d frame so n frame is a really useful function uh, for taking any sort of structure and somehow getting it into a data frame so let's check this out in frame um, i've just given it a vector here of blah 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 and it has created a data frame for me with a name which is basically like an id column that it adds and then i've given a value equal to co contents so i've just named this column contents and then there's another function called d frame that does the opposite it takes our uh in framed um kind of structure and then converts it back into a vector blah 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 okay so we get the original vector out and you can see that these ids are kept here so it's actually a named vector that it returns okay so um this in frame function you're probably thinking okay when am i ever going to use this well good question so we've got this money ball list and sometimes these lists aren't very aren't formatted very easily so in frame becomes a superpower uh, when your lists aren't formatted that well. So you can see what this did was it took that list and in the ID column, it gave it username, email, and tag. And then in the value column, it gave character four, character four, and list four. So it actually converted the list in the same type of structure, which is nice because it makes it easier to work with uh, these kind of crazy lists that you might be um, creating. So we can do a little bit of data wrangling. I covered data wrangling in depth in weeks two and three in my 101 course. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get this back formatted uh, nicely. So I'm going to pivot wider first, and that's going to take this column, make these the names, and then these values here, it's going to make these the values. And then uh, what I'm going to do is unnest uh, the username through the tags. And you can see I've got username, email, and my tags here. And if I want to do one more unnest too, um, just for good measure, because this, this column here is still nested. Um, and actually, it might not let me because this is a character three. We'll try it anyways. So I'll show you the error we get. Um, tags, control enter. And we get a, uh, a, an error because this is not formatted correctly. So, but if we go back up here and I change this back to a list, Control enter, control enter. And if I run this one more time, we should be okay to do that final unnest because they're all lists here. So we unnest them and we get a character one. And then we can do one more unnest. And we get the tags in here too. So pretty cool. Um, and, and, uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty nice and neat and easy how we can start to do some pretty crazy stuff with, um, data wrangling in R. So, um, a couple bonuses, actually one bonus here. If you, if, if you are interested in, in, um, the data that I created, I created this interest rate table, uh, that was used up here. Uh, and how did it, you're probably wondering how, how I made this kind of line here. Well, I did that using the table function. Surprise, surprise, I made a date, um, which comes from the time TK package, um, made, a, made a time series of uh, 12 timestamps um, at a yearly frequency starting in 2010. And then I made a kind of crazy uh, function here that just basically generates this data um, in kind of a decreasing fashion. So, uh, and then I use write Excel to write it to an XLSX file. All right, so that's it for this tip. I hope you learned a lot. Um, it's definitely a powerful tool to learn how to create data frames, and I gave you four different ways in this tutorial. If you like this video, don't forget to sign up for the Tuesday Free R Tips newsletter. You can just click this uh, link here, and it'll send you here. 
put your email address in and every Tuesday you'll get these videos, you'll get the code, and you'll get the tutorial right in your inbox.